Uh, El Jono, where charcoal chicken just tastes better. If we got Matty Johns ready to go to us, here he is. Matty Johns, welcome. Matthew. Uh, Fletch, F-Dog. Uh, here he is. <laughs> yeah, MJ. What's going on? Oh, mate, pretty quite. Tourist was telling me about, uh, I like that, boys, some of the things, your habits you pick up from your parents. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. I, um, well, when I first started... When I first started drinking, um, 14, <laughs> no, no, when I first started drinking, legal age, mate, I would drink two years old, just that was a two years old drink. That's mm. tough. Yeah, two years old, sometimes just a little little bit of uh, lemonade in there, just to take a bit of the edge off. Uh, well, the other things, mate, I used to always, you get a loaf of bread, uh, I wouldn't take uh, the bread from the first couple, always dip down low into yeah. the back the middle. And mm. uh, the other one was tomato sauce on French toast. From the old man. Oh, that's rank. Hang on, hang on. but Matty, do you <laughs> still do you still do this? Any of those yeah, you I, still do? Yeah, I do. I when I go down to my local, I'll I will drink. I'll drink black beer. I'll mm. drink two years old. Um, I uh, I do have tomato sauce on French toast still. Oh. And the other one was that he introduced me to, which I still have, is you know the Jaffles. I love the Jaffle maker. Yeah. Pe- peanut oh, yeah. butter Jaffles. Oh. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it, how you pick it up? Mine was, I uh, picked the, and I don't even know I do it. I take the fifth paper of the Herald on a Saturday. It's got to be the fifth one down. Don't know why. Because people are That's still, strange, isn't people it? still in that sort of stuff. Uh, curry you... sausages too, because I say to everyone, oh. curry sausages, I love them. And my kids absolutely hate them. And I say, girls, just try it. Because I make them so rank. It looks rank, but I call yeah. it rustic. <laughs> but in the, in the old days, that's all you ate. I reckon I'd have curry sausages three times a week, at yeah. least. I yeah, think last time man, I was talking to you, you none of your it. kids would eat them. They don't. Yeah. And did you ever get the ham steaks? They're round. No. Oh yes, yes. So it's just like really yeah. thick. It looks like spam. Probably spam. <laughs> Remember the? Uh, it was like yeah, you had the Devon, of course. Yeah. The uh, you had the and we used to have like the. So we we had dogs and we also had a cat Phil. Phil. Yeah. Um, I've spoken about quite a bit. I love and Phil. we had the Devon roll, but also the cat food was in a roll once. Anyway, yeah. Joey's come home on the drink oh. and knocked over basically knocked over the um the whole <laughs> the whole roll of cat food. That's, <laughs> That's he did lots of things when he was a kid. He went to hospital for uh eating rat sack. <laughs> what? He went to hospital for for eating uh Omo. Yeah. He, um, what about what about when he accidentally uh, slipped on that uh that apparatus. Remember that? He had to go to hospital. <laughs> Remember that? No, oh, that was hey, now, Matthew, um, I was just talking to the missile about you and his uh, Paris trip. Yeah. Sunshine in Paris. Emily in Paris. And uh, he tells me that one night you were telling Rose how to run angles. He was saying uh, Rose was just frothing. She just wanted more and more M. Johns about how the Newcastle halves just used to uh, ball play. Yes. Oh, yes. Exciting. Yes. She, that was that was me missing rugby league being over there at the Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. I she was, took it uh, well, I'd a, imagine. Oh yeah, yeah, she loved yeah, it. Yeah. She, she was intrigued. Yeah. Could not could not believe it. No. Could not believe it. In fact she's considering going into coaching. That's how good a job I <laughs> <laughs> Hey Maddie well, I tell you what, I reckon she could probably do a better job than a few of them. Maddie Fletch you. Don't say don't say his name. Don't say Um <laughs> Fletch probably wouldn't know this, but I was listening to your interview with Gordy, uh, yeah. you and Coops, and Gordy spoke glowingly, Fletch, about you and about Hindy. Did so he, he said he, he was jealous of you as a player. Was he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I kid you not, didn't he, Matty? Yeah, he does. Yeah, have, he, did. he does have the cameras. <laughs> yeah, he, he did. He was uh, he was talking about how he was just like poor on the ball. Yeah, as Gordy says, bite down the mouth guard, come off the back fence. He said, we're Fletch and Hindy. He said, Fletch and Hindy were on the edge. He said they were skillful. Because when Hindy first hit, he reminded me, um, Gordy, when, when Hindy first came into first grade, he was a wide-running, athletic back rower, sort of really explosive. Clyde, fast. Yeah. And then, you know, bit by bit, he worked, they put him into the middle and become this workhorse, just <laughs> flopping on everything that moved. Oh, uh, he's still doing that. <laughs> should, have him, should have sent him in Canada. <laughs> uh, we've got a few questions here, uh, Matthew. They want to know about, we've got a Parramatta Eels fan, and they want to know who should Rollsy target because um, for what should be one of his major signings? Oh, Jeez. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Who's on the market? What, what, I mean, this, this is the toughest thing. I mean, it's 
I don't think it's ever been a more difficult time than turn over a roster or, or go and you know go and find somebody. Uh, oh, mate, I I'm going to have to take a little bit of time on that and mm-hmm. have a look. I mean. Uh, to, 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 oh, oh, what, what position? Yeah, maybe creative. what position? What That's about a fox? He may be on the market soon. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Possibly on the wing. Yeah, definitely. Um, as far as, like, he could do with a bit, bit more creativity in certain positions. Yeah. I do think um, there's a lot of talk about Gutho. Look, fullback is probably, I think, the most taxing position in the game. Uh, people who... Cause, Okay, it's hard in the middle, but the difference with uh, fullback, you're doing all that running, but more than that, you, you're at the you're at the mercy of kick chase and you know returning that ball. You know, like you, you got you're getting twenty and thirty meter impacts. That takes a massive toll on the fullbacks. I, I see fullbacks all the time. Like I remember Kirk Kidley played there by about year four, mate. His his body was just cactus, and you can see that with uh, you can see that now with Gutho. Mm. So there's talk of Gutho going into Go playing a fourteen role, something like that. So uh, they could do with a they could do with a, you know, a, a, an explosive fullback. They got a young guy there; they're going to have a crack at. But yeah, and and I think someone in the nine as well, a little bit of something in the nine. Matty, just on fullbacks, uh, your Knights were gallant in defeat on the weekend, but Kalen Ponga was out of this world. I I can't remember seeing a performance that good by him. Not only in attack, people were breaking the line, and he was jamming people in defence as well. Um, he, he has. He must yeah. be impressed. Oh, he was really impressive. Look, I, I reckon. I think the back end of this season, Miss Old, he's really come of age as a leader. There's been times that oh, you're thinking, you know, is he a captain? Because he's quite flippant, and he's he's sort of got that bit of a hippie attitude. You know, he's you know quite light and breezy. But from, I I. I I'd heard that the back end of the year he was starting to give blokes bakes and talking up before games and after games. And, uh, yeah, apparently after the game, the other night when they were eliminated, he went in the sheds and did a really good speech to the boys saying how proud he was of the effort and what they did at the back end of the year. So, But he, he's... Mate, he was phenomenal. It's going to be very, very interesting to see who Mal picks for fullback for the Australian side. Because mm. you got you got you got Dylan Edwards, of course. Uh, you got you know, there's the Reese Walsh. Who I don't know if he's having surgery or something. I'm not sure. The Reese Walsh. Uh, you got T- Teddy, who's the incumbent, and you got Kalen. So boy, oh boy, we've got some got some options there, Mal. Now, Matthew, the the Chooks didn't listen to you because I know you were very bullish on having Joey Manu at six. Mm. Do you mm. think? Hear me out. Do you think we could you could put Manu to fullback where he's excelled the three or four times he's played, especially yeah, international? Do you think you could swap them over and put Teddy in the centres, or are we weakening one position to gain another? Yeah. Fletch, one of the cornerstones of the Roosters is Tedesco through mm. the middle. You just won't get any value anywhere yeah. near the same value at right centre, and that that's my thing with Joey is that. Yeah, you know, get them, get them both in the middle field. I think the, I think the best chance the the Roosters have got at getting through this week and worrying those next two sides is just doing something unorthodox, yeah. like Manu. You know, well, getting in the close other to thing football. I was thinking putting Manu on the wing, where that allows him, yes, to do. You know, he can go both sides of the field. Mm. Yeah, I like that, Fletch, because wingers you know, certainly have a lot more freedom than uh, than, than centers, and centers are just sort of. They're locked into that position. They've got a lot of defensive responsibilities. And whereas, mate, the other thing about Manu, you know, on, on the wing, he's getting those kick returns. Yeah. Which he and Freddie, he and, sorry, Teddy can uh, combine with on, on and the kickbacks. And he's kick good, in the, good in the yeah, air. Yeah, free and free himself up a little bit. I think it's a, I think that's, that's a good one, Fletch. Thanks, Manny. Thanks, yeah, what no about uh, <laughs> on the Sharks, Matty? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Brandy was off the bit uh, oh. on breakfast. He reckons that the Sharks should drop Nico Hines. He's been named at seven. Atkinson is on the bench again. Uh, Jesse Ramian is on the extended bench. Should they have made any changes or you just roll that same side? Uh, well, Nico is definitely in my side still. Um, look, thinking about it just on the weekend, like it, there's no doubt Nico is down in confidence. But um, Cronulla's yardage game was so bad. They just they they couldn't get forward. They were really indecisive. There was very little time and space for Nico and you know to play and get you know getting time to, uh, to to do his thing. I I would consider if I was Fitzy, I would consider putting him to fullback. Don't know what that would mean to Will Kennedy. Again, it might be you know shifting something around and and, and you know weakening another. But I would consider that at the very least, boys. I said this last week. 
at the very, very least, I would call Braden Trindle and and Nick Owen, and I'd say, listen, Tricky, you're going to call the shots. Uh, mm-hmm. You're the prim- you know, going to be the primary playmaker as far as organisation is concerned. Nico, I, even though you're playing in the halves, I just want you to play like a fullback. That's how I want you to play. I want you to just think about everything you did at fullback, and that's how I want you to play. And leading up to the game, I, I reckon boys had to alleviate a little bit of pressure off Nico. Yep. There's no doubt that he's a bloke that puts a lot of pressure on himself. So I, I think by doing that, by just saying, listen, you know, forget the number on your back. Play like a fullback. Just pop up here, there, roam all over the place. I, I think that'd get the best out of Nick Owen. As I said, just take a bit of pressure off him. When you've had role. when you've had a moment in your career like that, Matty, um, with what Nico's going through at the moment, where either the media's questioning you, you're questioning yourself, fans are questioning your form. What did mm. you do to overcome that? Uh, went to England. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's tough. Everyone goes through really rough patches, particularly when you're playing the creative positions. Mm. And uh, yeah, I went, I went through. Oh, you know what I reckon you do, Miss Ol? You just scale everything back, right? And and if you, the perfect example is Matt Burton. Matt Burton was just eaten apart by the responsibilities, his perceived responsibilities, by wearing the six. And at the start of the year, he just scaled everything back. He wasn't calling attacking shapes. He was doing one or two things. If he liked what he saw in front of him, he'd run the football and take him on with his size and his speed. If he didn't like, he'd just feed, he'd feed Viliami kick out nice and early. And bit by bit, as his confidence started to grow, he started to take on more with his game. Then he started to call shapes. Then he started to do a little bit more ball playing. Then he started really getting his kicking game right. And you look at how he played at the back end of the year, to, to, you know, compared to what he was doing at the very start and last year, it was night and day. So that, that's my advice would be to Nico, is just be just have a couple of things in your game, right? And really compartmentalise. If you like what you see in front of you, just take them on. If you don't, feed someone early in support just, just and, and everything stems off that on on matt burton and the bulldogs matty i'm still recovering from sunday okay. but every, every year we see there's some teams that come from outside the top eight in and then they drop off the next season are the bulldogs a side that are going to drop off next year or can they have uh, maintain success uh yeah it's going to be it's going to be a test missile because um the Bulldog supporters are just so fanatical. They love that club so much. And, and although they were knocked out week one, like those players, they'll get a lot of adulation. You know, when you go, right, Bulldogs fans slapping them on the back, you know, wanting to buy them a beer. All, that's, that, all that is tricky. We've spoken about this ad nauseum about the Broncos. Um, and so that will be a test. It's going to be, they need Toby Sexton to back up and continue to pr- improve. But I think all things considered, Tupanua goes there next year. That's going to, he'll be a great pickup. I sort of wonder if the Roosters are regretting letting him go, but he's going to be a great pickup. So I, I, this year their goal was finals football. They achieved that. I think next year the goal will be uh, final four. Uh, I think, and they've got a, they've got a decent chance. Um, I certainly hope that. I mean, Bronson Cherry, he was out for four years. I mean, next year he'll be better again. Mm. So, yeah, I, I don't see a reason why they won't continue to improve, Miss Uh MJ, who do you like this weekend? Give us your tips for... Uh, let's go Chooks. Manly first. Uh, I like Manly. Manly, Fletch. yep. Yeah, but I like Manly. That, that, that win, uh, the way they dug deep and found a way to win that game when they were under the pump for the entire match. And oh, it is, as I said, mate, that, that playing group, that's their greatest win. And I reckon they probably even surprised themselves how deep they were able to dig to get that win. Mm. And that sort of emotion, highly emotional win can send you on a decent run. Did I? Could I think that, you know... Uh, the Manly could beat one of those top sides. I still would say, if you put, you know, if it's Manly against Penrith, Manly against Melbourne, who wins? Well, I go for the other, yeah, you know, the other two sides. Um, but a win like that can really send you on a run. That's why I think they're going to be really tough to beat for the Roosters. Okay, and uh, Cowboys, Sharks. I, I like, I like the Cowboys. Yeah. Um, what's the Cowboys like? The Cowboys play their best football, right? They're a little bit. A little bit different to a lot of sides. The Cowboys play their best football when they open the field up. Work to an edge of the field and may play long side shifts. They look really good. And they, they, it works really well for them because it opens the gaps between, you know, the, with the defenders up. It just it gives guys like uh, gives Drinkwater more 
scope to move. It gives uh, Tommy Dearden opportunity to show and go and go through. But crucially, the really big one is that it creates space and time for Hillam Lukey and Jeremiah Nenai, those two back rowers, athletic back rowers, who are fast. Uh, that's that's when they look really good, the Cowboys. I'm backing the Cowboys to get it done. Mm. i tell you who I've been impressed with, Jake Clifford. They've, a yeah. Fletch, i tell terrific. you what he's been really good at. Obviously, he's a running halfback, but yep. he's not sort of trying to overcall anything. He understands where he fits into this team. It's going deep into the left, and then you see drink Drinkwater will scoot to the right, and he'll just push up with him. I just mm, yeah. like he's no airs or graces about him. Maybe because he's a young kid, he doesn't want to step on anyone's toes. But when well, he makes a decision, mm. it's either pass or you know he's just going to take the line on. Well, for Fletch, just have a little as a talk about it, have a little look. I I think he I think Jake might be about twenty seven now. I'm guessing because well, he came into grade. He had a lot of raps on him. He yeah. was a kid that was coming in. He was going to be the natural successor to Jonathan Thurston. And he's, he's a little bit different than what you would expect from a halfback. Um, he's a kid, when, I, I sort of picked up when he was in Newcastle, he was a kid that he hasn't got natural confidence. Takes him a bit to build himself up there. Had a really, a really, really difficult time at Newcastle. Uh, Newcastle, you know, for a number of years now, have really chopped and changed with their halves. And he was a part of that last year or a couple of years ago. And that really affected his confidence. Went over to Hull and started to find a little bit of confidence and has just come back a more mature player. We see that quite a bit with uh, with playmakers and, and some players who can't find their niche in the in the NRL to go over there for a year and come back better footballers. But but again, back to what we're talking about with Nico and Burton, he's simplified. Yeah. He knows his best stuff is his running game and his kicking game. And he doesn't try to finesse the football, pass it around or step on and drink his toes or dead in his toes. As you said, Fletch, he does what he's good at. All right, well, MJ, we're going to have to go because we've got Tootsie Croker's uh, oh, tip running. Tips. Yeah, race eight, number eight, Ravishing Sloy. Sounds okay. Good. Sounds like a restaurant. Ravishing Sloy. <laughs> Ravishing Sloy. What name? Where do they get these names from? Like, who would, in their right mind, call their trotter Ravishing Sloy? I, I can't believe that R&T got through. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a horse, there's a there's a thoroughbred that's called R A A A R. A R T double E yeah. R N T. It's awesome because I asked <laughs> I, I asked Pete Landis one day. I said, Pete, who looks at the names? Because you know how sometimes they knock back names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit rude, or I hey, can't do any, yeah. any re- religious rot. Mm. Obviously, they don't know, know what an R N T mm. is. Yeah, uh, but you know, know Gordon, very... Gordon is very persuasive. Yeah, I know. He's good, <laughs> he's good at that. He's good at that. <laughs> the king of R T S. Yeah. Matthew, enjoy the night. Enjoy the night, and congratulations on the bear winning all those Emmy awards. Oh, thanks, Fletch. Yeah, no, it felt good, mate. Good on you, brother. Thank you.